Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here again. Spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. I heard that prosperity preachers are using their congregations to establish wealth. I hear that people are planting seeds, thousand dollar seeds, as if this is to get God to give them a blessing. Well, the rest of it is history. I also hear that hospitals are shutting down. I hear that many are merging together and for some strange reason, a lot of them are making big bucks. Yet there are many that are shutting down. Now, God does not want this to happen and neither do I. We, God and I, want every person, young and old, that have interest in the medical profession to be blessed. Make plans to do what you have to do. The nation will back you. Choose your specialty. Get excited about it. Education or other training needed must be made available, and it must not be at any cost to you. Our aim, God and I, is to satisfy the requirements necessary to care for every individual in need of care. The best care, great providers and servants. There are other changes that must be made in order to accommodate such an aggressive move as this. But those changes are known and they are simple to satisfy. I invite many of you to watch some of my other videos. You will see that I address this quite frequently. I find a need to say something in regards to this some got and some, some don't. You know the haves and the have nots. I find that it is necessary that something is said about that. I have put myself in a unique position to be able to speak to that concern. Like most people I want to have my dreams come true. I'm sure we all do. Some of us have it coming true. Most of us don't. And many of us don't have anything close to it. So I'm saying here's a situation that is dealing with every human being on the face of the earth. Every last one of us want our dreams to come true. There's not a single individual on earth. And when you speak about a God, each and every last one of us would conclude that a God for us is a God that cares for us as an individual who is humble to a God that does not care a thing about them. Well, I find it necessary to address their concern. Because here I am in the middle of it all. And I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, poverty is no place that anybody want to be. Being poor is one of the worst things that can happen to anybody. And we have abundant resources on the earth to make sure that there is no poverty. And since every last one of us would benefit from the absence of poverty. It has been designed in such a way that each of us can play a part in the process of creating that abundance, which in so doing make us part owners in all that exists and we are not beholden to anyone except that power that is invisible that provided all the resources. And that's God. The rest we work together to achieve an end. That, to me, 
is as expressive that you can ever get to s suggesting that you appreciate a higher power, that you appreciate a God. And that is to show that respect for God to one another. Now, knowing all of these different philosophies, studying all these different scriptures, part of this organization, all of that stuff means nothing. It means nothing. Even the books that you study, the books that you read, the books that you go through, scamming through, spending your life through, means nothing if it's not translated into action. And there is no greater action that can be translated than that action that speaks about love for one another. And that protects one another. That means that you're living in peace, you're prosperous, you're living free, you're joyous, you're happy, you're living your dreams. You're not ever suffering for food, clothing, or shelter, or education, or health care, infrastructure, any of those things that's made by the hands of man. You're suffering for nothing. And you don't have to lie, cheat, steal. You're not beholden to anyone but God. And beholden to God means you're beholden to everything. That means you do what is proper. And what is proper is what you have been given to do. There are no big dogs. There are no little dogs. There are no big hymns, little hymns. All of that stuff come from men. When I say men, I'm talking about human beings who wanted to replace uh, or sit in the place of an invisible God. But they have not enough love to express that which is God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say this. We have been put here with choice. Every last one of us have choice. Now, I don't, we, we'll, I'm assuming that everybody got choice. I do, and most of the folks I ever talk to, they, they got choice. So you can or you can't. You will or you won't. So if you got choice, why are you praying for somebody to do something for you when you won't do for yourself? If you're going to pray, ask God to give you some get up and do. You want it. You got to do, you got to do it. You see the things, how easy it is to say we're going to not we're going to take uh, black history out of the schools, education. We don't want people talking about black folks, teaching about black folks and their past. You see how they want to change things around, how simple they're going to do it? You see how simple after a while they're going to start talking about automation and we won't need you human beings to work anymore. What do you think they're going to have for you to do then? Well, the way God has it set up, when automation takes you up to that place, then you do something else. You're free to do other things to to imagine and do great, wonderful things. That's what God has planned for you, but man trying to make money, trying to do everything he possibly can to make money. And if it means having war, wiping a whole bunch of people off the earth so they can make more money, they will do it. So I'm saying you got a choice. Every day you live, you're making a choice. You're making a choice when you say, we went through hell yesterday and there's nothing I can do about it, so I'm going to go through hell tomorrow. You're making a choice. You might not have to call your congressman. Your congressman doesn't have any sense because he thinks you have no sense. And you have acted like you got no sense. you got to start waking up yourselves. And I've seen people who had a kind heart turn to be some of the most evil people you can imagine because they were living in a situation that made them. Now you say they had choice. Yes, they had choice. And with that choice, and what they had to deal with, they developed into some of the worst monkeys you've ever seen. But who's standing there speaking for God? I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, the evidence is the thing that speaks for you. Now, as I stand before you and say, I speak for I, me and God working, trying to work this thing out to create heaven on earth, trying to take you someplace you say you want to go. If I had to look at, around us, I don't see anything coming close to that, 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 that end. 
I don't see anybody, I don't see any objectives even working towards that. When people start picking out little things, we're trying to work on this little area over here. We're trying to work on this little area over here. You're wasting time. What why, What happened when you fix that little area? You're going to go get on something else? You're going to get on something else? This is going to fall apart again. No, you do the right thing. The right thing covers everything. And if you don't know what it is, got to listen to someone who does. And the one who does tells you and when it comes out to you, you hear nothing that says you're going to suffer. And you are all right with that. And then you take the necessary actions to make sure that that happens. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to mention that to you to start you to think it. Now, I've gotten enough videos to explain exactly how this thing works out. But I would also like to suggest that there is a video uh, by a guy named Jock Friskus. I think uh, he passed away in 2017, but it's the video I would recommend that you watch is The Venus Project. The Venus Project. It is a picturist view of the things basically that I talk about. It gets a little bit deeper than me because there's more people involved in that. And they have got deeper and deeper tr tr trenches to travel. So they get much more into being making it visible, visual, so you can understand what I have been saying. So get a chance to watch it. It's the Venus Project, Jock of Frescos. And um, until next time, Eddie Martin say goodbye. Well, now, what did I say I was going to call this? Mm, well, I don't, I don't have a name for it just yet.